On May 19, 1977, 20-year-old Colleen Stan stood on the side of Interstate 5 in Northern California, looking to hitch a ride. An experienced hitchhiker, she had already let two potential cars drive by when the Hooker family pulled over and offered to assist her on her journey to a friend's birthday party. Comforted by the presence of 19-year-old Janice Hooker and the fact that she was holding an infant, Colleen accepted the ride from the group. It would be the worst mistake she would ever make, as she would learn depravity knows no age or gender. This is the story of the kidnapping of Colleen Stan by Cameron and Janice Hooker. Welcome to Mystery Theater. Janice Hooker was the type of teenager to be easily persuaded and manipulated. Incredibly insecure, she described herself as, quote, the kind of person who gave in so somebody would love me. So in 1973, at the age of 15, she was delighted by the attention of 19-year-old lumber mill worker Cameron Hooker. Tall and good-looking, Janice felt lucky to be receiving the attention from the nice, if what's somewhat shy, older boy. And nice was exactly how many described Cameron Hooker in his high school years. Though often withdrawn and intentionally avoiding social activities, he showed little sign of the monster lurking underneath the surface that he would eventually become. But Janice's passivity and habit of latching on to men, no matter how poorly she was treated, allowed Cameron Hooker to slowly experiment with his darker side and allow his inner psychopath to unleash as he began to request progressively more depraved things from an all-too-willing-to-comply-for-acceptance Janice. When he first suspended her from a tree by her leather handcuffs, it hurt and frightened her, but his show of affection afterwards quelled her fears and reservations. But as the relationship progressed, so did Cameron's violence. And by the time the duo wed in 1975, he was whipping and choking her as well as submerging her underwater to the point where he nearly killed her. But Jana stayed with her abuser despite not enjoying any of these sadomasochistic sexual acts. And finally she managed to come to an unthinkable agreement with Cameron. They would stay together and have a child if Cameron could have a slave girl. Instead of simply leaving or reporting the monster her husband was becoming, Janice simply passed the torture off to another innocent, unwilling victim to save herself the trouble of dealing with it herself. The agreement was simple. Cameron could do anything to his slave victim he desired, except have sexual intercourse with her. So after giving birth to their daughter in 1976, Janice waited a year and then agreed to hold up her end of the bargain, accompanying Cameron on a joyride to search for slave victims with her daughter in hand. It didn't take long for Cameron to pounce once they picked up Colleen Stan, threatening her with a knife and locking her in a wooden head box he had built and kept in the car. When he got her home, he removed her from the head box, blindfolded and gagged her, and hung Colleen naked from his ceiling. Cameron and Janice had sex that night under her nude, suspended body. Over the next seven years, Colleen Stan was subjected to unspeakable tortures, whipping her, electrocuting her, and despite Janice's initial protests, raping her, ignoring Janice's no-intercourse rule. When Cameron was at work during the day, Colleen was kept chained in a coffin-like box under the couple's bed. Sometimes she remained in the box under the bed upwards of 23 hours a day. Janice Hooker even gave birth to the couple's second child on the bed while Colleen lay locked in the box beneath it. Eventually, Cameron decided to begin giving his slave girl more freedom. But in order to allow for this, he had to make sure to brainwash her with fear. After forcing her to sign a slave contract for life, which stipulated she was only to be referred to as K, and was to call the couple Master and Ma'am, she spent the majority of her time under the bed still, slowly being allowed more freedom as Cameron began to convince her he was a member of an underground organization known simply as The Company, a dangerous group that would track her down and kill her family should she attempt to escape. Among her newfound freedoms, Colleen was allowed to jog, work in the yard, care for the children, and help Cameron build bigger accommodations, namely an underground dungeon in preparation for more slaves. Colleen did all of these things under the belief she was being watched by the company. 
Her belief in the woven tale was so strong that she was often left with an open door and access to a telephone, and never made an attempt to alert anyone. She was even allowed to visit her family in 1981, visiting once by herself without revealing the truth of her situation to her family members. Her family knew something was up, however, due to not only not having received communication from her for years, but also because she wore homemade clothes and had no money. But they assumed she was possibly in a cult and did not want to pressure her for fear she would leave again and stay away from them forever. Colleen returned again to them the next day, introducing Cameron Hooker as her boyfriend. A photograph was even taken of Cameron and Colleen standing together as a faux couple. In the photo, they appear to be smiling together and happy. Despite this apparent happiness, however, Cameron began to regret the decision to give his lifetime slave that much freedom and returned her to her box under the bed for 23 hours a day for the next three years. A bedpan was used for bowel movements, which Colleen positioned under herself in the small coffin-like box using her feet. She was forbidden from making noise, as the couple had now told the children Kay had left and went home, and she had to lie still and quiet for the full 23 hours inside the box, which had little air to breathe and would reach temperatures of over 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the summers. Finally, in 1983, after three years of 23-hour confinement and six years of total captivity, Colleen was again allowed some freedoms being reintroduced to the children and neighbors, and even being allowed to get a job as a maid at a motel. It was around this time that Cameron Hooker would finally make the mistake that would become the beginning of his undoing. Apparently having Colleen as his personal sex slave wasn't enough, and he planned to make Colleen his second wife. After enduring years of mental abuse and allowing him to do anything he wanted to her as well as others, the declaration of desiring a second wife finally pushed Janice Hooker over the edge. By August of 1984, Janice informed Colleen that Cameron Hooker was not part of the company. No longer under the threat of her family being murdered by an unseen entity, Colleen ran to a bus station and took a bus home calling Cameron Hooker from the bus station to tell him she was leaving him. He broke down in tears. Still being under some kind of spell from the couple, however, Colleen did not call the police, but rather called Cameron Hooker regularly, wanting to give him a chance to reform per Janice's request. It would be Janice, not Colleen, to finally call the police on Cameron, three months later, telling Lt. Jerry D. Brown of the Red Buff Police that Cameron had also kidnapped, tortured, and murdered Marie Elizabeth Spinaki, a girl who had gone missing before Colleen on January 31, 1976. But authorities were never able to find her remains, so with a lack of physical proof, they were unable to bring murder charges against him. In 1985, Janice received full immunity for testifying against her husband at trial, and Cameron Hooker was sentenced to 104 years for sexual assaults, kidnapping, and using a knife in the process. His original 2023 parole hearing was moved forward by seven years by California's elderly parole program, and on April 16, 2015, his request for parole was denied. Cameron Hooker will be eligible for another hearing in 2030. In the true crime world, psychopaths are easy to come by. But even in this depraved crowd, Cameron Hooker stands out for the frequency and consistency of his brutality. In the end, the case of Colleen Stan and Cameron and Janice Hooker is proof of just how strong a psychological influence one person can have on others, and how even the most vulnerable and tolerant have their limits. Stan's inaction of calling the police and instead keeping in touch with her captors after the horrific treatment she endured may also seem puzzling to most, a condition commonly known as Stockholm Syndrome, where victims begin to sympathize with their captors over a period of time. In the end, Cameron Hooker deserved much worse than he got, but at least he'll never be able to victimize anyone else ever again. I'm Jason Hebert, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.